Violent collision kills two people outside Tampa International Airport. An alleged road rage attack rips three families apart. Tonight, we're learning about the boys who were killed. Prosecutors are going to pursue charges against people who are texting while driving. That's right, this DUI and murder suspect could get life in prison if convicted. You don't think it can happen to you. It can happen to you within seconds, a blink of an eye. When you take your eyes off the road for just seconds, when you're driving your car, oh, yes, it can happen to you. See, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When the sands of time will run out within your hourglass. He was a victim of a distracted driver hitting the road while riding his motorcycle going 65 miles per hour. He nearly lost his life. Now on a crusade to help save lives and prevent someone else from becoming a victim, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com and now the host of this podcast is Howard Drescher. And I got notes all over the place. Um, you know, how much time do we got? What? No, I think that she should be uh, sent to jail for life. What? We're on? Oh. All right. Hey, welcome to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com. And, of course, now this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV. And, of course, on Facebook, it's DistractedDB. And you can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDriversBusted.com, as I think I've already mentioned that. You can listen to the podcast show on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and now Amazon. Just use the keyword DistractedDriversBusted.com. Oh, man, just as we were coming on the air, just as we are getting ready to tape this show today, uh, my uh, producer goes and t- starts talking to me about what do I think about one of these stories that I got and I'm just talking, not even paying attention, uh, not paying attention to the cues, and because I had my headphones off, and I can hear them say, uh, "What do you think about this story?" And I'm thinking to myself, "Well, lo- I just say lock her up," and I am not afraid to say that on the air. I am not afraid to say that the story that we have today has a lot of implications. Uh, the I can tell you this that the police officer world is reeling and let's just let me let me rewind a little bit here i need a rewind and i'm not going to start the show over but you how much of that got on the hair that we were talking about that's the question uh guess you guys will let let me know because quite honestly as the producer puts the show together i don't really listen to it until after it's been posted in case i make any mistakes or edits although i tell them don't take anything out of the show. Don't do that for me. And nine times out of 10, they don't. Sometimes they take out some big blunders, but that's just here or there. That's their decision. That's what they do. So here's the story. I'm going to start my opening part all over again. I'm not going to do the intro all over again. Uh, Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com. And of course, now this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV at DistractedDBTV, and of course, Facebook, DistractedDB. And yes, I will acknowledge I have a lot of new followers, new followers to Facebook and my Twitter account, and I appreciate that. And you can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and now Amazon. Just type in the keyword DistractedDB. Uh, So much to talk about, so much to go over, so many stupid moronic people are out there stupid moronic people out there and it still continues to thrive today here it is again again it it just bewilders me that this stuff is still happening today uh for the life of me i have no idea uh what is going on i've got my days mixed up i think the show was actually supposed to have been posted yesterday i'm posting it This morning, uh, it's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. I got to tell you, I have just got to reel things back in. I have been so uptight, so wound up about all this stuff that's going on. Not only here in America, I'm paying attention to what's going on in Ukraine and dealing with Russia. Uh, I still have some friends that are still in the military, uh, as you know, that I've retired a couple years ago, 
more than a couple of years, but some of them are still in there. And I'm like, man, you know, are you planning on doing a 30, 40-year uh, hitch? Anyways, good for them if they do, uh, but I still have people there. But let's get to the story. This is not a political show, but I need the political people get involved in this story here. And I just got to tell you, it just burns me to no end. And I got this story from ABC6, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. A woman charged with murder uh, after a DUI crash killed two straight troopers and another man on I-95. It's been all over the news. It's been all over everything. Uh, I just don't even know where to go on this, uh, to tell you the truth, quite honestly. Uh, it, it just disturbs me to no end knowing the fact that something like this is happening and it just is driving me freaking crazy. It's driving me crazy. Why? Listen to this story. Find out what happened. Trust me, you will not be thrilled about this at all. I am not thrilled about this at all. And I am here in California. I am not where this is at. I can understand why state troopers and all law enforcement agencies are on edge when you have people just like this. And again, this story comes from uh, ABC6, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. Speaking right now, charges have been filed in the crash that killed two Pennsylvania State Troopers and another man on I-95 in South Philadelphia. 21-year-old Jayana Tanae Webb is facing murder, manslaughter, DUI, and other felony charges. Tuesday afternoon, I'm Sarah Bloomquist. And I'm Brian Taft. The big story on Action News today is the breaking details in that crash that claimed the lives of Troopers Martin Mack and Brandon Siska. Those charges were just announced within the hour. Action News reporter Jacqueline Lee is live outside the Troop K barracks in Winfield Heights with the very latest. Jacqueline. That's right, Sarah and Brian. It's still a very devastating situation all around, and we did get this information minutes ago. Now, uh, I do want to say hours ago, they, the state police, they did walk the suspect out of these barracks for the first time, and you know, police are devastated with what happened. And she is facing nearly two dozen charges related to this incident. With her head down and tears streaming down her face, state police took 21-year-old Jayana Tanae Webb of Eagleville away in handcuffs a day after officials alleged she hit and killed state troopers Martin Mack, Brandon Siska, and the pedestrian they were assisting on I-95 Monday morning. Authorities announced the pedestrian was Reyes Rivera Oliveras, 28, of Allentown. Webb is facing a laundry list of charges, including three counts of third-degree murder and three counts of homicide by vehicle while DUI. Philadelphia attorney Joe Kelly specializes in DUI cases. He says the three counts of homicide by vehicle DUI alone carry a lot of jail time. So you're looking at anywhere from nine to 30 years. Nine to 30 years. Yep. The minimum, will be, the minimum will be nine based on, I don't know what her prior record score is or whether she has a prior record or not. Officials have not released many details regarding the driver, aside from the fact that she traveled at a high rate of speed leading up to the crash. Kelly says the suspect is charged with third-degree murder because authorities found malice, which could be caused by excessive speeding. The impact was so great that it threw the troopers over into northbound lanes of Interstate 95. The vehicle then struck the Jersey barrier, continued a short distance along Interstate 95, and ended up on the right side shoulder. As for the victims, friends have created a GoFundMe for Trooper Martin Mack's wife and their two young daughters. A family friend said in a statement that Marty was a hands-on dad that loved his two daughters and wife unconditionally. The family is broken. There is also a GoFundMe for the Siska family to support Brandon Siska's wife and their unborn daughter, who is due in July. And the Pennsylvania State Troopers Association says that scammers are trying to take advantage of the deaths of these two officers. They say these scammers are calling people asking for money to go to these families. That organization says they would never call people asking for money. So do not share your personal information and do not give them any form of payment. We're live in Winfield Heights, Jacqueline Lane, Channel 6 Action News. That's All right, I want to thank ABC6, ABC6 for allowing me to use the sound uh, up there in Pennsylvania. Oh, my God. Throw away key. Lock her up and throw away the key. That I mean, there, is there anything else that can be done? Is there anything else that needs to be said? This lady has got no business being behind the wheel. 
malice, malice that you had intentions of doing something, nine to 30 years, that is not right. It should be more like 70 to 100 years. And I don't care. I don't care. I am sick and tired of these a-holes doing what they're doing. I am so tired of people killing cops. I'm so tired of people killing all these other people that are innocent people. Two cops, one man killed. And the cops, the state troopers, were assisting this man with his vehicle at the time. How in the hell can this kind of stuff still happen today? It's because we have lack of respect for everybody. Everybody thinks about them effing selves. You hear me? It's about them effing selves, and I don't care. That's what I feel. Everybody, it's all about me, 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 me. It's not about me. You've got to be kind to your fellow man and your fellow woman. That's what it's about. You cannot, you cannot tell me that if this young lady had somebody within her family get hit by somebody from that, that was a drunk driver, a distracted driver, doing what she did to somebody else, to somebody within her family. You don't think she'd be behind the podium right now going, oh, well, how did this happen? How in the hell can this happen? Each and every day, come on, tell me how. Bullshit. Bullshit. I don't want to hear it anymore. Either you put the hell up, you put up or shut up. Put up or shut up. I stand by what I say. I'm not a distracted driver. I don't take phone calls when I'm driving. I don't take text messages when I'm driving. I don't care. You can call me, text me, and I am not going to pay attention. Or if it's something that's really important, I'll pull off on the side of the freaking road and I will gladly take your phone call. I will read your text message. I had a boss who was pissed at me one time because I didn't answer his damn phone call. I told him, I said, you ain't getting me to answer the damn call when I'm behind the wheel. That is the bottom line. And if you don't know why, listen to my podcast shows. You'll know why. I really don't give a rat's ass about what anybody says. To me, this woman, Miss Webb, you are a despicable person and you have no business being behind the wheel. You have none. 21 years old, 21, you just threw your life away. Goodbye, goodbye, go away. Lock up the key and throw it away. Lock her up in jail and throw the keys away. I mean, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. I'm just so frustrated, I can't even speak now. This woman has drove me crazy waiting to get to do my podcast show. I've been so busy doing other things. I was thinking about doing it late at night. I got to tell you, this is so bad. There is no reason why this woman should get out of jail. If anything less than than 9 to 30 years, I would say anything less than 15 years, that's bull. And the prosecutor, he needs to go to jail himself because this better be put up to the max. You're dealing with two state troopers. Two state troopers that got killed and a man on the side. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you? It is so crazy. I'm hearing about it each and every day. There's always a crash, a DUI, a car ripped in half, a car is doing this, flips over, smashes into a house. When does it freaking end? When will it end? There has to be testing back in school. That's They're learning from their parents. Kids are learning from their parents on how to drive, and they're bad drivers. They grab the phone. They talk. They text. I drive down the road every day, and I see people on their phones talking. I see them on their freaking phones text messaging. Are you freaking crazy? When's it going to freaking stop? When are you guys going to get it through your head? Oh, I get it. You'll get it after you freaking kill yourself. And quite honestly, I applaud you. Yay. You screwed the hell up. Now you're dead. Should have listened to my podcast. Because I really don't care. Anybody want to call me out about this? Anybody want to freaking call me out about this right now? You better listen right now. I don't give a rat's ass. Two damn state troopers are dead. And a man 
was killed. Malice. Think about the charges. Three counts of murder. Three counts of homicide by vehicle because she was drunk under the influence and a DUI driver. And malice. Malice alone just tells you. Oh, you know what? That story just pisses me off to no end. Man, just take a break. Hit, hit, hit the break, man. I, I just can't. This is just so freaking ridiculous. Oh. You're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. When I come back, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Just stick around. Listen to the podcast show. Oh, I'm so, I am just so livid. I am so, I'm just so up, beyond myself. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. We'll be right back. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. (sighs) Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Now, back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, welcome back to the DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show. I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com. And, of course, now this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and, of course, on Facebook, DistractedDB. You can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and now Amazon. Just type in the keyword, Distracted DB, and during the commercial break, my producer called me and said, are you okay? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. No, my gosh. Do you know what? I That was probably the hard, that was probably, yeah, the hardest kind of show I had to do right now because I, and I've done some pretty hard shows, but I just spoke my mind. I said, you know what? I'm letting this off. I tried to hold back in past shows. I'm not holding back anymore. You screw up. I'm going to F you up, man. That's all there is to it. I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you out, and there's not a damn thing you can do with it because you're the one that did it. You got behind the wheel after drinking. You crashed. You did it. I didn't do it. You did it. You go to jail. You did it. You kill somebody. You did it. And what should happen? (laughs) Yay, you screwed up. Good job. Good job. Way to go. I just tell you, it just drives me to no end on how this kind of stuff happened. And now it's time for the top story from the previous show. All right, it's time for the top story from the previous show. And from the previous show that we did the last, um, I think it was last Wednesday, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of striking that we're talking about idiots. And of course, there was no bigger story than this last week when it comes to being stupid. Remember ABC7 talked about this uh, guy who rented a Tesla and he took it for uh, hopping over uh, uh, um, a road, doing jumping to see if how far the car would fly down this avenue and everything like that. Here's a story from ABC7. You tell me if you don't think this guy's an idiot. 
Dramatic video now. A driver trying to pull off a dangerous high-speed stunt in a Tesla crashes in an Echo Park neighborhood, and the video is blowing up on social media. That Tesla blowing through an intersection, going airborne, then slamming into two parked cars and several trash cans. Multiple spectators' cell phones captured the dangerous scene near Baxter Street and Alvarado. The, rento, the rented 2018 Tesla was then abandoned at the scene. LAPD says the driver, who remains on the loose, will face hit-and-run charges. Baxter Street, very well known in the area. It's extremely steep, even without speeding. Wow. That was the top story from the previous show. All right, that's the top story from the previous show. And I want to thank ABC7 for allowing me to use the sound. How? Oh, is there any more of an idiot than that? Honestly, to tell you the truth, it just drives me crazy that these kinds of people, these kinds of actions are just still out there and they're still happening. And it just, it just gets me so upset because it could be me out there that they're hitting. It could be me out there that they kill. It could be me out there that, that you know, they just completely wipe off the face of the earth. And to me, that's not cool at all. When you think about that, that is definitely not a good thing to do. You're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show. I'll be back right after this. Are you listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show? Oh, I just had to take a quick break there for a second, and I apologize. Actually, I had a one-minute commercial spot that I was supposed to play there. I put up the wrong audio piece. That was my fault. Uh, I hit it remotely from here. Uh, that was me, all me, and I will set up the board properly next time. I don't blame my producer at all for that. That was totally on me, and I apologize for that. Anyways, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show. I realized that after about like 24 seconds that there was no audio for the commercial because it just the music just kept on rolling. Is this show good or what? <laughs> oh, I got to tell you, that is so funny. It is so bizarre. All right, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. Let me tell you, man, I was talking without the, when the mic was on. Uh, today's show is just totally... A roller coaster. I'm just winging it today, right now. I just started. I'm just going to wing it. Here's a story that I got from uh, CBS2 here in Los Angeles. And I think I threw my paper away. Uh, yeah, I did. That other paper that I wadded up is actually where my other story was at in regards to a young UCLA woman that was killed. And the tragedy of this whole thing at a high rate of speed at 2 a.m. in the morning. And the car ended up splitting in half. Now, why was she speeding? Nobody knows. Why did she lose control of the car? Again, nobody knows. Here's a story from CBS2 here in Los Angeles. And I really appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound because there is no way that I can make it through this show any further without their assistance. A young woman lost her life in a horrific crash on the 101 freeway. As CBS 2's Tina Patel reports, a photojournalist at the scene tried to save her, but sadly, it was too late. The 101 freeway is back open after being closed for much of the morning commute, but the deadly crash is still having an impact on those who knew the victim and those who witnessed the aftermath. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. When photojournalist Howard Raishbrook pulled up to this crash scene on the 101 freeway Thursday morning, he was taken aback. I've been looking at crashes for 20 years, and we've seen some horrific incidents, but half a car on the freeway, half the car off the freeway, it was 
devastating. He saw a woman lying on the ground near the wreckage. He says he didn't think. He immediately started CPR. I had to try something. I mean, I know it's a dangerous situation. There's cars still flying past. I could smell gasoline. There's a car in half. Um, it's kind of on a dark corner. So it's like, do I try? Yes. Do I risk it? It's, I, I, I tried. CHP officers appreciate what Raishbrook did, but they say the impact of the crash was too great. The efforts that he made was incredibly brave and incredibly heroic, but unfortunately it was, it was not enough to bring them back to life. Investigators are now trying to figure out what caused the 20-year-old driver to lose control and swerve into the guardrail by the 101-134 interchange. It was just after 2 a.m. They don't know if she fell asleep, but it appears she was going at a high rate of speed when she crashed. Investigators are talking to her boyfriend, who had been on the phone with her minutes before. She was driving home from the valley to Pasadena, and uh, after he hadn't heard for a while, uh, you know, he came looking. He then contacted family members who showed up and consoled each other on the side of the road. Investigators say another driver crashed into the wreckage and suffered moderate injuries, but is expected to be okay. They hope this crash will be a warning to drivers to slow down and pay attention, especially in the early morning hours. We really want people to have that follow distance, that safe speed, where they can safely avoid uh, any sort of tragedy. Investigators do not believe that drugs or alcohol were a factor in the crash, but they're asking anyone who might have been on the freeway at the time and saw something to let them know. In North Hollywood, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. All right, again, I want to thank CBS2 here in Los Angeles for allowing me to use the sound. Um, look, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. There is no there's no way to say it. It's a sad day when, when a young 20-year-old male or female ends up losing their life because of the fact they were speeding, they lost control. Uh, it's just sad. Now, nobody knows why she was speeding and... Quite honestly, they're probably never going to know anyways. But I can tell you this, it's a very sad situation. This is a situation that shouldn't happen. And any parent that goes through this, it's devastating. And you just want people to pay attention. You just want people to understand what, what and how they're driving. It's a weapon. If you really think about your vehicle it could be used as a weapon. You start going 60, 70 miles an hour and crash into somebody. Total devastation. Total devastation. And it's just baffling that these kinds of things continue to happen each and every every day here in Los Angeles and all across America. It's just heartbreaking and it's sad that a young woman probably almost just doing what she had to do. Either one, she was going to work, coming back from college. Uh, I don't know, and honestly, I don't think anybody's going to know at this time. But but at 2 a.m., speeding, it, it, it doesn't paint, paint a pretty picture. And it's a picture that's not going to be completed now because nobody's going to know. Nobody will know what happened. And for the life of me, it just totally baffles me that this kinds of things happen and i i don't know about you but I, honestly i i'm devastated by this kind of stuff i'm devastated by this whole dui crash killing state troopers i'm devastated by pretty much everything that's going on here when people get behind the wheel they they don't care I hope you care. Remember, I don't want to die today, do you? Remember, put your cell phone in a glove box until you get to your destination. There's no reason to answer it. It can wait. It can wait. Until next show, we'll be back. <laughs>